Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to discuss corn leaf stages and how you can identify them. Now, as a non-farmer, you may be saying, well, why do I care? But I just think it's kind of interesting as a farmer, well, so I like talking about it. It is kind of interesting, but you have to think about things this way. Whether you have a garden or whether you have big fields of crops, growing the most grain out of that crop is very important. So we look at corn and we say yield per acre. Well, we want to have 200 bushel corn per acre, or we want to have 300 bushel corn per acre. You know, there are so many little things that you can know and learn about that crop that you can help influence that yield by learning the stages where different development things are happening with your corn. For well, example. the other thing is corn is a grass crop and most grass crops are similar in their growth stages to corn. So once you know corn, you kind of have a good idea about a lot of the other grass crops, including small grains and many others. Okay, so with corn, first of all, when you plant your corn, you put the seed in the ground roughly at two inches deep. With that seed, that seed is gonna stay exactly where you plant it. So it is never going to move. So even a year later, if the residue is there from your dead crop, I can determine exactly what your planting depth was because that seed is never going to move. Well, so, and that's right where your growing point is. With any grass crop, there's one growing point. Here it is, right where that seed's at to start the beginning. with. Yep. Now, the first thing that comes out of the ground is just going to be leaf tissue. So when farmers are concerned early in the season, like this year we had a frost scare and there was some corn that was up that got burned off a little bit. Well, that for the most part is just leaf tissue that's above the ground. Okay, but let's not jump ahead too far here. The first thing that's going to come out of that little seed there's going to be a little sprout that's going to come out and that's going to head upwards. We also have roots that are going to head downwards. The two root systems that are going to come out in the beginning are the radical root, that's first, and then the seminal root. They're coming right out of that seed or out of the germ, we call it, of the seed. As you're moving up, there are actually going to be a set of nodal roots that happen above the seed yet still below the surface of the soil. There will actually be five rings of those nodal roots that will be below the surface of the soil if you plant your corn at the proper Depth. And here's what they correlate to. Above ground, we have different stages of growth, and it's not the number of actual leaves that you see, it's the number of leaf collars. So when we reach V1, for example, that means we have one collar corn, and a lot of times that corn plant, you're going to visually see probably three leaves up above ground. But you're looking for one leaf collar, and once you see that one collar corn, you know you have one ring of nodal roots down below. You get to two collar corn, you have two rings of nodal roots, three and three and so on, all the way up to five. Once you hit V5, you've got all of your five nodal rings established. Now here's where I was going with my earlier discussion and wandering ramblings. When we're looking at those early stages of growth, like when we get to three collar corn, that's where we start to influence our yield in corn. That's where those well, ear whoa, whoa, shoots whoa, whoa, are whoa, starting whoa, whoa, to be whoa. initiated. Yeah, no, we, we start to influence yield as soon as you place it in the ground. So don't don't ever think that, oh, nothing well, you do certainly. really early in the year certainly, doesn't but, make but a difference. Certainly, but what I'm saying well, is what, now we're starting to influence the well, size of that ear. Well, no, what we're starting to do is we're starting the reproductive stages, even though we don't technically get to the reproductive stages until silking, so we'll get to that in just a second. At V3 already, that ear is starting to be formed. Those ear shoots are initiated at V3, so your corn plant is only, let's call it three, four inches tall, yet ear shoots are already starting inside the plant. But that growing point is still safely below the surface of the soil. That's really the next key. When we get a couple more leaf stages up and we get into that V5 and V6, that's where that growing point now is actually moving above the surface of the soil. But it's so still for, wrapped internally in that leaf tissue. So for farmers, they're trying to be especially careful after that point with different weed control products that they're using and those types of things because we don't want to injure that corn plant. And also at that stage when the growing point is above ground, this is where we're very susceptible to hail, strong winds, those kind of things because now that growing point's up there and if we would happen to snap off right at the ground level, that plant would be dead. That growing point eventually becomes the tassel and right after tasseling, there's what's called silking where the silks emerge from the corn ears and that begins the reproductive stages. And then you've got roughly 60 days of reproductive stages and then you're going to have hopefully dry down and maturity in the fall. Well it's important to understand any crop that you're growing whether it's corn as we just went through the growth stages of corn 
or anything out there, especially when you're thinking about weed control. If you understand when those weeds are susceptible, you can wipe them out from your field. Can you identify this week's weed?